Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and in today's short application exercise, we'll program and test a PLC-based reversing motor starter. We'll examine the behavior during normal operation and its response to emergency stops and overloads. This lecture is predicated on the assumption the viewers watched the commissioning a PLC system featuring the Tico SG2 PLR lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. This aforementioned lecture configured a Tico SG2 PLR, an inexpensive basic PLC, to direct the operation of light industrial, 120 volts line to neutral, 208 volts line to line, 60 hertz, three phase AC primary circuit, configured such that the F contactor energizes a squirrel cage induction motor in the forward direction, and the R contactor energizes a squirrel cage induction motor in the reverse direction. The F and R contactors are mechanically interlocked such that they cannot be simultaneously closed. The PLC has been configured with the following field input and output devices. A normally open maintain contact selector switch on input 1. A normally closed momentary contact red push button on input 2. A normally open momentary contact green push button on input 3. A normally open momentary contact yellow push button on input 4. The normally open auxiliary F1 contact of the F contactor on input 5. And the normally open R1 auxiliary contact of the R contactor on input 6. The first four field input devices are intended for human-initiated interaction with our system, whereas the auxiliary contacts on inputs 5 and 6 serve as feedback about the status of a particular contactor. Note the maintained contact normally closed e-stop is not a direct input to the PLC, but rather serves as a hardwired bottleneck through which all six field input devices immediately downstream of it must negotiate to issue input to the PLC. Wired in this fashion, the hardwired e-stop effectively severs all incoming communication with the outside world without the necessity of resorting to any programmed instructions to do so. Let's now examine the field output devices. Electromechanical relay output Q1 directs the operation of the F contactor coil hardwired with a normally closed overload contact. Electromechanical relay output Q2 directs the operation of the R contactor coil also hardwired with the same normally closed overload contact. This hardwired connection between the two contactor coils and the normally closed set of overload contacts allows the overload to have the last say as to whether the motor is energized or not and never surrenders complete authority to the PLC. Wired in this fashion, the normally closed overload serves as a means of directly de-energizing either contactor coil in the event of an overload without the necessity of resorting to any programmed instructions to do so. Electromechanical relay output Q3 directs the operation of a red pilot lamp an electromechanical relay output Q4 directs the operation of a green pilot lamp. Again, note the maintained contact normally closed e-stop serves as a hardwired bottleneck through which all field output devices immediately downstream of it must negotiate to be energized. Wired in this fashion, the hardwired e-stop directly above stream of all field output devices effectively severs all outgoing communication from the PLC without the necessity of resorting to any programmed instructions to do so. You will no doubt recall that a reversing motor starter as implemented using traditional hardwire relay-based ladder logic is one that uses paired contactors wired such that the phase sequence of the forward contactor initiates operation in one direction and the other in reverse. It is vitally important that both contactors are never simultaneously closed as this would constitute a phase-to-phase -phase event and as such, reversing motor starters customarily employ degrees of interlocking to prevent this most heinous of circumstances from occurring. The first level of interlocking is mechanical in nature in that the paired forward and reverse contactors cannot be simultaneously physically closed. The next level of interlocking is electrical in nature in that forward and reverse and contactor coils cannot be simultaneously electrically energized. Another level of interlocking, push button interlocking, deselects the opposite mode anytime one mode is asserted. Push button interlocking is a common feature in reversing motor starters that feature plugging action. Plugging, you'll recall, is the instantaneous reversal of the rotational direction bypassing a stopped intermediary state. We'll examine PLC-based plugging programs in later application exercises. For the purposes of this exercise, we're going to use the normally closed momentary contact red push button on input 2 as our stop button, the normally open momentary contact green push button on input 3 as our forward button, the normally open momentary contact yellow push button on input 4 as our reverse button, the F1 auxiliary contact of the forward contactor on input 5 is feedback input about the status of the forward contactor, and the R1 auxiliary contact of the reversing contactor on input 6 as feedback input about the status of the reversing contactor. Ideally, when an operator presses and releases the forward button, the motor will turn on and stay on in the forward direction. When an operator presses and releases stop, 
the motor will turn off and stay off. Similarly, when an operator presses and releases the reverse button, the motor will turn on and stay on in the reverse direction, and when an operator presses and releases the stop button, the motor will turn off and stay off. This particular PLC-based reversing motor starter program will not feature plugging, and via electrical interlocking, not allow the opposite state to be asserted if it has already been placed into a particular operational mode. Here's the program we'll be making use of today. Note rung 1 contains a make construction examining input I2, the normally closed momentary contact red stop push button. A make construction examining input I3, the normally open momentary contact green forward push button on input 3. And a software generated brake construction examining output Q2, a reversing contact or coil in series with output Q1, the forward contact or coil. Rung 2 contains a make construction examining the F1 auxiliary contact in parallel with the make construction examining I3 in rung 1. Rung 3 is a parallel extension from rung 1. It contains a make construction examining input I4, the normally open momentary contact yellow reverse push button, and a software generated brake construction examining output Q1, the forward contactor coil, in series with output Q2, the reversing contactor coil. Rung 4 contains a make construction examining the R1 auxiliary contact in parallel with the make construction examining I4 in rung 3. If you think about it, all our reversing motor starter program consists of is two three-wire control circuits, one governing forward operation and the other governing reverse operation. Really, the only thing special about this program is that it includes software-generated brake instructions acting as electrical interlocks that prevent reverse operation when the motor is in forward mode and vice versa. you note neither the e-stop, the overload, nor the mechanically interlocked contactors make an appearance in this program However, these devices are readily apparent in the hardwired schematic. Wired in this fashion, the e-stop and overload serve to override the PLC program in the event of an emergency stop or overload event, and the mechanically interlocked contactors prevent simultaneous closure of the forward and reversing contactors. When the program is downloaded to the target device and placed into operation, we can observe its behavior and simultaneously monitor the program using a live communications link. Note the two videos are synced up, However, there's a noticeable lag in the monitoring utility. When the green forward push button on input 3 is closed, the F contactor coil is energized, the F primary contacts closed, and the motor turns on in the forward direction. We note the make construction examining input I5, the F1 auxiliary contact, confirms that the F contactor is actually closed and establishes a holding circuit using real world feedback, and an operator can release the forward push button. While in forward mode, the electrical interlock provided by the software generated brake instruction examining output Q1 on rung 4 prevents reverse operation despite repeated closure of the yellow reverse push button on input I4. When the stop button on input 2 is open, the F contactor coil is de-energized, the F primary contacts open, and the motor turns off. You'll note the make construction examining input I5, the F1 auxiliary contact, confirms that the F contactor is open and drops the holding circuit. Similarly, when the yellow reverse push button on input 4 is closed, the reversing contactor coil is energized, the reverse primary contacts close, and the motor turns on in the reverse direction. You note the make construction examining input I6, the R1 auxiliary contact, confirms that the reversing contactor is actually closed and establishes a holding circuit using real world feedback and an operator can release the reverse push button. While in reverse mode, the electrical interlock provided the software generated brake instruction examining output Q2 on rung 1 prevents forward operation despite repeated closure of the green forward push button on input 3. When the stop button on input 2 is open, the reversing contactor coil is de-energized, the reversing primary contacts open, and the motor turns off. You note the make construction examining input I6, the R1 auxiliary contact, confirms that the reversing contactor is open and drops the holding circuit. This system behaves as anticipated for normal operation. Let's now examine this system's behavior during emergency stops and overload events. As previously, when the green forward push button on input 3 is closed, the F contactor coil is energized, the F primary contact is closed, and the motor turns on in the forward direction. You'll note the make construction examining input I5, the F1 auxiliary contact, confirms the F contactor is actually closed and establishes a holding circuit using real world feedback, and an operator can release the forward push button. While in the maintain run state, Opening the e-stop directly depowers both the field input and output devices without reliance upon any programmed instructions to do so. The forward contact or coil is de-energized, the forward primary contacts open, and the motor turns off. Activation of any input will not return the motor to operation. Once the e-stop is reset, the system returns to the deactivated start state and does not immediately resume operations until directed to do so. Similar behavior is observed when the e-stop is activated while in reverse mode. 
the system seems to correctly respond to an emergency stop condition. Let's now examine the system's response to an overload event. As previously, when the green forward push button and input 3 is closed, the forward contact or coil is energized, the forward primary contact is closed, and the motor turns on in the forward direction. You know that the make instruction examining input I-5, the F1 auxiliary contact, confirms the forward contact or is actually closed and establishes a holding circuit using real-world feedback, an operator can release the forward push button. If during the course of operation, an overload event occurs, in this case I'm simulating an overload by manually testing it, the open overload directly depowers the effective field output device without reliance upon any programmed instructions to do so. Forward contact or coil is de-energized, the forward primary contact is open, and the motor turns off. Note the make instruction examining input I-5, the F1 auxiliary contact, informs the program that the forward contactor has been forced open by some outside influence and breaks the holding circuit. While the overload element is hot, the system cannot resume operation. As can be expected, when the overload is reset and the holding circuit broken, neither contact or coil is immediately re-energized and the motor remains off. Only when an operator actively makes the decision to return the system to service does it do so. Similar behavior is observed when the system experiences an overload while in reverse operation. This program behaves as expected for overload conditions. All right, that's about it for this quick application exercise. In conclusion, we programmed and tested a reversing motor starter with a software-generated electrical interlock that prevents operation in reverse mode when the forward mode is selected and vice versa. This program operated as anticipated during normal operation, emergency stops, and overloads. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell you Lee's lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.